What's going on, everybody? It's Nemesis FTW here. We're here to talk about AMD Vega and how it's going to affect your PS4 Pro in the future. Oh, I shouldn't say the future because it's already baked into your box. Uh, actually, this was announced last year by Mark Cerny at the PS4 launch event for the PS4 Pro uh, that the PS4 Pro will be featuring some Vega architecture pieces, which one of those is Rapid Pack Math. Now, Rapid Pack Math is something that's being featured in the Vega graphics cards that just released, the Vega 64 and the Vega 56. Now, to break this down for you a little bit, because, you know, even for me, this is new information to me to learn, I went on to techpowerup.com and I found an article pertaining to the Rapid Pack Math, and they describe it as this. The new feature here is Rapid Pack Math, wherein multiple 16-bit operations can be handled simultaneously between 32-bit operations. If a task has some complex 32-bit operations where precision is key, nothing will change. However, if your application is not demanding on precision, for example, if it is a lighting effect or a change from one to another, you can use Rapid Pack Math to perform set operation as a 16-bit one, which has take up less resources and increases performance throughput through the GPU. So obviously this is good for game development. They're going to be able to optimize their games even more, taking some of those operations that don't need to be 32-bit operations down to 16-bit operations, still being able to get great quality, but be able to then get some more GPU power and put it to other resources in game. So more power to them, right? That's great for PS4. That's great for the Vega cards. But, but what real performance can we expect for the PS4 Pro when it comes to this rapid-packed math? When it comes to the Vega cards, we do have some kind of ideas of what you can really expect from this FP16 math. Now, 3D Marks are working on a benchmark that they worked along with AMD to develop called Sarah, which features a 16-bit math in the benchmark. And in that benchmark, AMD was able to gain between 20% to 25% in certain areas like bloom effect and volume lighting. Now, that's only part of the part of the pie, though. When you add everything together and run the benchmark, the Vega 64 bench system was able to gain around 6 frames per second, going from 44 to 50 frames, going from 32-bit math instruction, and then mixing in 16-bit math instruction, uh, they were able to gain around a 13.5% performance increase, which is a good thing. But what does that mean for PS4 Pro? PS4 Pro's games are locked at 30 and locked at 60 frames per second, so hopefully these performance gains are essentially just going to mean that games are going to be locked at 30 and not have frame drops, right? We do know that Wolfenstein 2 and Far Cry 5 have both come out. The developers have come out saying they're going to use this feature in their games on the PS4 Pro and the Vega version of the games. But what if I told you right now we can get an idea of what this could do possibly for games for the PS4 Pro? Gaming Bolt did an article about Mass Effect Andromeda. The devs explained they had benefits of checkerboard rendering and a 30% improvement due to FP16. Now, they go on to show in the article, compared to a native 1800p image versus the checkerboard version they used in-game, they're able to gain a 30% increase in performance. Now, that sounds great and everything, right? He's like, oh man, this game's going to be amazing. Well, going watching the Digital Foundry review of the 4K version for the PS4 Pro and comparing it to the PC version, you see at times, of course the game struggles with frame rate. Now, let's get to that in a second, but let's talk about the image quality of the game. At times, the game comes close to the 4K version on the PC. Of course, the PC version is the definitive edition, but the 4K PS4 version does a good job a lot of the time. There are cases where it does wash out, the details do go away, just because of obviously the rendering and the process they're using. But the biggest problem for me for this game is the fact that the frame rate suffers. A game that, again, is 900p, there's a 1080p version, and a 1800p checkerboard up to 4K, all three versions suffer from a frame rate issue in this game. The game drops below 30 frames, down into around 25, which might not seem like a lot, but when you're playing a game that's locked at 30 and drops 5 frames, it's more noticeable than losing 5 frames at 60 frames per second. That is an issue. And in a situation where you're using these features to try to improve performance, sometimes you might have to scale some things back to get better frame rates, and that's probably what they should have did with this game. Uh, the 1080p version on this game is a super sampled version of the game from the 1800p checkerboard version down sampled to the 1080p version, so it does look better than the native 900p version on the PS4, the vanilla version, but still suffers from the frame rate issues. And the person doing the video wish that they actually made a 1080p version native and then worried about frame rate and then worried about improving uh, graphical quality. And that's probably where they should have went with that version. 
But instead, we get a game that still kind of suffers from issues that we'd expect, you know, because of hardware limitation on the PS4 Pro. Because there are some hardware limitations. This machine does have a lower bandwidth. It does have less memory for the developers to work with. But that's why they're employing these things like FP16 to try to fix some of those areas where they're kind of suffering in hardware. And that's not a bad thing. But to say this machine is 8.4 teraflops of superpower is so far from the truth. Mark Cerny pretty much threw this number out for everybody because he knew for one, fanboys would run with it. Two, it's bigger than the Xbox One's uh, native 6 teraflops of performance. So it was going to make everyone go crazy. And the hype train started rolling. But once the PS4 Pro came out, nobody talked about it anymore. And then now the Vega cards are out. All of a sudden now it's big news again and how it's going to somehow close the gap between the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. It's going to off a marginal performance increase for games. It's going to help developers be able to squeeze a little more out of the machine, but it's not going to close the gap. The machine still has hardware limitations. Software can make some optimizations to improve, but it's not going to all of a sudden just make it dead nuts even between both of these machines. Now, I know some people have been complaining about the Xbox One X not having this feature, saying it's kind of weird that they have the same architecture, same AMD architecture, and they chose not to use it. Microsoft decided to go a different route, optimizing for DX12. They have It's their API. Uh, they made sure at the silicon level that they were able to reduce draw calls using that controller system they built specifically for the Scorpio, or the Xbox One X in this case. And because of that, it'll make it easier for devs to make games on PC and, and port them over to the Xbox One X, or maybe vice versa because of that DX12 optimization. That's what they chose to go for because DX12 is more readily usable by most devs compared to a feature only native to the PS4 Pro and these two Vega cards. And that's it. That's why I think Microsoft made the move they did. And it's not to bash Sony for choosing this because this, if this is going to improve performance in games for them, more power to them. I'm assuming more first party is going to use this than third party because, again, you got to get devs on board to use something that a fraction of people are going to actually take advantage of. And that's really hard to do when NVIDIA owns the PC market as far as graphic card sales. And, you know, in the case, the console space, it's like the vice versa. You got, you know, them owning PS4, owning the market. But is it enough to sway developers to use this feature that we'll have to see going forward? But again, I wanted to bring everybody down from the hype train because it is crazy out here on the Internet. When you're looking all over the place, there's articles everywhere, there's videos and it's just unrealistic. You know, Mark threw that out there as just a way to kind of just take some steam away from Microsoft with their, you know, speckling from last year from E3. And you know what? People who actually know about stuff like this, who actually know about tech and, and are willing to learn and go and explore and learn stuff, they already knew this was a bunch of hot air. So I just wanted to kind of pass this on to you guys. You know, hopefully it educated you a little bit. Hopefully you guys will be a little more realistic. It's just like DX12 with the Xbox. A lot of Xbox fans came out, freaked out, thought it was going to solve all the problems of the Xbox One and make it so powerful, and they gained maybe two frames per second in a game. It was ridiculous. You know, there's no way you're going to change something that's going to just optimize, you know, and make things just magically awesome, okay? There's no secret sauce here, guys. I'm, I hate to say it to you for either Microsoft or Sony when it comes to these optimizations. So hopefully, hopefully this squashes everything. Just enjoy what you got. They have great games on the Sony platform. They have amazing games. I'm looking forward to Horizon. I'm looking forward to all these other games. Uncharted just came out with a game. I'm excited for those things. You know, I'm excited for when the Xbox One X comes out because I just pre-ordered one. And that's how it should be. You should just be excited for gaming, period. Who cares about this freaking number crap, this numbers game that's being played? So thank you guys for stopping by and watching this video. Hopefully you guys will hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.